Hello and good morning. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. What can I say? You are my everything. I will sing your praise. You shed your blood for me. What can I say? You took my sin and shame, sinner called by name. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. For we know your truth has set us free. You set your hope in me. Mercy and grace are mine. Given is my sin, Jesus, my only hope, the Savior of the world. Great is the Lord, we cry, God, let your kingdom come. Your word has led me see. Thank you for saving me. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. For we know your truth has set us free. You set your hope in me. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord, for we know your truth has set us free. You set your Thank you for saving me. What can I say? Have a great week. And welcome to this morning's offering, which is a little bit different to last week's, but is a bit more reflective as we enter this V Day weekend. Are these Germans too? Oh yes, but I can do Right, right. Here's the plan. I'll stand there and ask them if they want something to drink before the war. Before their lunch. <laughs> before their lunch. Don't mention the war. I played that clip not to get a laugh out of the line Don't mention the war. Well, you started it. No, we didn't. Yes, you did. You invaded Poland. But I played that line because it was the line, don't mention the war, which was very much something in my family. My grandfather, my Norwegian grandfather, was 
in the Norwegian army, then in the Norwegian resistance, and then spent most of the war in a prisoner of war camp in Germany called Sachsenhausen, which was where they trained all the SS guards and commandants and tried out their various experiments for the final solution that they then welled out in the other more famous camps. My mother was brought up and became a teenager in occupied Norway where they were forced to learn German but obviously tried not to until they learnt that if they didn't pass their German exams they would be deported to Germany themselves. My other grandfather, my English grandfather, was a special constable in the Second World War, having gone through the trenches, Passchendaele and such like, in the First World War. But none of them spoke about it. You got the odd hint here and there, but generally it wasn't mentioned. Life got back to normal and trying to build a better life and build a family were their important ideals. And that got me thinking about what I was going to say this weekend. And it was that not mentioning the war. We're going through a crisis at the moment and um, we hear the stories of a few people, but actually most of the stories are silent and quiet and will never be heard. And I was reflecting on our church, our church building that many of us miss at the moment, not just as a gathering place, but as a monument. Our church has been there since Saxon times. The oldest part of it is over a thousand years old. It has seen Viking invasion, the Norman conquest, the threatened Spanish invasion in the, by the Armada, threats from the French, the Scots under William Wallace. It's gone through the Hundred Years War, the Thirty Years War, the Seven Years War. It's gone through various revolts, not least the Reformation, the Pilgrimage of Grace, the Peasants' Revolt. It's gone through the Plague, the Black Death, when over 50% of the population of this country died, and there's probably a plague pit in our graveyard. More recently, it's gone through the Boer War, the Crimean War, two world wars, IRA bombing campaigns and yet it stands with very few scars on it. There's one or two. There's a war memorial, the window in the side chapel. There's traces of the Knights of St. John, going back to the Crusades that it also went through. And there's possibly marks in the stonework where the Knights sharpened their swords whilst the Knights were at prayer in the church but generally it doesn't say very much about it, just like my family. But it stands as a permanent reminder, as something greater, something more permanent, something that these troubles are just momentary to, including the crisis that we're going through at the moment. It stands as a pointer too, to something greater in the future. And I thought I would just show you some pictures of our church in the various seasons of life and think about how it bears testimony through all of those events and continues to do so through today's events.
I'm sorry if that clip seemed to end a little abruptly. It wasn't that I'd run out of pictures, but actually I left it deliberately because the final chapter is yet to be written. We're busy writing some of that. There are possibly other chapters to come. But the building is a semi-permanent reminder in all of those to the greater goodness of God who stands above this all and also in his own way has everything in his hand. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where the streams of abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name when I found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out of Turn back to praise When the darkness falls as it lost Still I will say Blessed be your name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you The Soldier by Rupert Brooke If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is for ever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam. A body of England's, breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. And think, this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less gives somewhere back the thoughts by England given. Her sights and sounds, dreams happy as her day, and laughter learned of friends and gentleness, in hearts at peace under an English heaven. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass. 
and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, of my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Your rich in love. Hello, happy Sunday. I'm going to be reading some prayers that the Church of England have written especially for this weekend. Let's pray. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those men and women who have died in active service, particularly in the Second World War, whose sacrifice brought victory in Europe. As we honour their courage, and cherish their memory, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to follow this with an act of remembrance. Thank 
Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. A prayer for VE Day. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. O Lord our God, as we remember, teach us the ways of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us to hope. As we give thanks for the sacrifices of the past, help us to make your future in this world until your kingdom come. Amen.
I'd like to take the chance to thank all the brave men and women who fought 75 years ago for this country, both at home and abroad. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for bringing us peace. Diolch and by heddwch in Thank you for fighting for our freedom on land and sea. Dad, thanks for keeping us safe. From the entire rugby community, we want to thank you for all your courage. Thank you for putting your life on hold. Thank you so much for all that you did. To all those who served in the Second World War. We thank you for your service. You are in our thoughts and your achievements have not been forgotten. You are truly a great generation. We stand shoulder to shoulder with you. You inspire us. We proudly walk in your footsteps. Without you, I would not be me. So, from one group of veterans here in the Tower of London to another, we salute you. Up. Thank you. To those who gave so much, we say thank you. Thank you from everybody in the NHS for doing what you did for our country. Your generation won our freedom. And we want to say just two words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for today and given us the life we live now. Thank you. Thank you.